Hello and welcome to another video of CASSP practice questions and answers with explanations. So the purpose of uploading uh, these videos is actually that I hope that uh, they're going to help you in your preparations and at the end you are actually better equipped than before. And for that I encourage you that you can pause, you should pause these videos at any point at any given time when you feel uh, you, you need to pay attention and you need to read through these uh, explanations which I highly encourage that you do because these explanations they are going to actually cement your concepts if you already know the answer but if there is an answer that you don't know uh, it's better that you go through the explanation and make sure that it stays there with you all the time until you pass the exam and after that you can keep them while you are at your job I would highly recommend doing that part okay so I'm trying to actually keep these videos under 10 minutes uh, so that you don't lose your attention while into it so it begins and here we go the first question out of these 10 questions in which of the following security models is the subject's clearance compared to the object's classification? So we need to read the question very, very carefully again. Uh, the subject's clearance compared to the object's classification such that specific rules can be applied to control how the interaction between subject and object is going to take place. Now we know that there are security models out there uh, like mandatory access control, discretionary access control. Uh, these models, nothing is like mandatory or discretionary here, but we have these models which are based on mandatory access control like Bellapadula model, Biba model, and then the other models out there. So which of these models actually uses subject's clearance level with the object's classification level and then tries to identify the right path to do or to, to go to. Uh, I think it is going to be a Bella Padula model because this model is actually based on mandatory access control model and it does this subject's clearance level and classification things and it is actually talking about this uh, confidentiality uh, of, of the information. So let's go ahead and click the show the answer thing. So it is right here. So it is also called a multi-level security system. You might be reading something about like a lattice-based uh, access control model. So this is a multi-level lattice-based access control model as well. You can read the description again. You can pause it here, but I'm going to go ahead. The second question, which of the following division is defined in the TC sec? or also known as orange book as minimal protection so trusted computer system evaluation criteria uh, it has four divisions or four levels classes in which it basically uh, evaluates the the given system and which one of these classes is going to be known as the minimal protection the answer is a and why I have selected this one, just read through the explanation. So I'm going to bring your attention to the crux of this thing that is A, verified protection, which is the maximum level of protection, and D is the minimal protection. So we were talking about the minimal protection, and in the middle, there is C, which is discretionary protection, and B, mandatory protection. So minimal towards maximum, we come through, come across, this discretionary protection or mandatory protection. Please remember these. Uh, these are the actual, you can say, the main point in, in the TC sec. There are like subclasses among these, uh, but for now, we are good. So we are going to move ahead. Which of the following places, the orange book classification, which is the TC sec classification in order from most secure to least secure. We just actually read this part. So which of these are the choices? Now, if we go for the elimination thing, uh, these classes are kind of like A, B, C, D. So the other option, 
possible candidate could be only which is in reverse order like a b c d and then d c b a not these c and d options so we are competing in these two uh, options given here i'm going to go with the a b c and d because we're talking about most secure to the least secure a is the verified protection d is the minimal security moving on question number four what would best define a covert channel now this is my favorite thing actually because a lot of the time we confuse this with maybe a vulnerability uh, um, like just like given here a trojan or something a backdoor just like given in here but it actually none of that kind of a thing uh, sometimes we use these vehicles to actually do these sort of things but this is not the definition here. So we have to look for the exact textbook, classic book definition kind of a thing. Option A, undocumented backdoor that has been left by a programmer in an operating system. It's a possible candidate out there, but they're just talking about like one operating system. They're limiting themselves to an operating system, whereas it can be in any given system. So I'm not actually selecting it. An open system port that should be closed. Well, an open system port well, it's not a covert channel. A port is actually used to communicate appropriately, properly as well. Uh, a communication channel that allows transfer of information in a manner that violates the system's security policy. So the system does not intend to actually communicate in this way. That is why it is called a covert channel. So that is option C. Moving on. Which of the following establishes the minimal national standard for certifying and accrediting national security systems? So these are the stress points here. National standard for the national security systems. So there are these four options, TCSEC, Department of Defense related thing, HIPAA, healthcare, personally, uh, personal health information protection, DIACAP, or NIACAP or N-I-A-C-A-P. I am going with this National Information Assurance Certification and Accreditation Process thing here. You can read the description. You, you just need to memorize this thing because this is not something like you're going to be doing this thing as uh, like 2 plus 2, 4 thing. It is like just like there. There is this abbreviation and this is the specific purpose for this organization to do. Question number six, which of the following classes is defined in the TCSEC as discretionary protection? Now, this should be an easy one. Should I select C or B? It's not definitely A, it's not definitely D because this is minimal protection. This is the maximum protection. And between the minimal to the maximum, there comes discretionary and mandatory. Now, we're talking about this discretionary. So D minimal, discretionary C, B is mandatory, and A is verified protection. So we are basically selecting this option C. Moving on. Which of the following access control models requires defining classification for objects? So objects, they are going to have a classification level or label assigned to them. Uh, and subjects, they're going to have a clearance assigned to them. So which of these models actually go for that? In the first question, I told you about that Bella Padula model, which is based on mandatory access control, because then the rules are being are, are going to be followed. We, we It cannot be like a discretionary, because where uh, the data owners, the information owners, they're going to be defining uh, who is going to have access uh, kind of like they're controlling it. But the mandatory access control systems, they are being controlled by the rules, which depend upon these two things, subjects clearance and objects classification. Showing the answer, here it is. Which of the following classes is the first level defined in the TCSEC, TCSEC as mandatory protection? So we are talking about mandatory protection. D, minimal, A, maximum, B and C. It can be B or it can be C. So which one of them is 
the right answer? Should I select the B or should I go with C? Which one? Which one? B. Okay, yep. So remember this thing, D minimal, A maximum. So moving from bottom to the top, discretionary is the second last, mandatory is the third option from the bottom, and then the fourth one from the bottom is the verified. Moving on, at which temperature does damage start occurring to magnetic media? This is going to be like this. Yep, I'm moving on. What security model is dependent on security labels? We know the answer. Yep. So guys, this is the end of today's session and I wish you best of luck with your preparations and uh, happy practice questions. See you in the next video. Thanks and bye.